But first, I want to talk about impeachment. What is impeachment? What does impeachment mean? Where does all this stuff come from? High crimes and misdemeanors, what does that mean? High crimes and misdemeanors, you'll find it Section 4 of Article 2 of the United States Constitution. Quote, the President, Vice President, and all civil officers of the United States shall be removed from office on impeachment for and conviction of treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors. Now, I want to focus in on the phrase high crimes because there's a lot of confusion about this, and I'm here to fix it. It has a meaning, but it doesn't have a meaning as some people might suggest. What is a high crime? What does that mean? Does that mean a president goes out and goes to a 7-Eleven and holds it up? No, that's not what it means. High crime, high in the legal and common vocabulary of the 17th and 18th centuries of high crimes, English common law, which had a big impact on the framers of the Constitution, particularly when it came to the impeachment discussion, and that was extensive, is the activity by or against those who have special duties acquired by taking an oath of office that is not shared with ordinary persons. Well, that would be the president. He has certain duties and responsibilities. He took an oath of office. And so what is a high crime? Well, it's a person who violates that. Who violates what? Okay, let's take a look. Article 2, Section 1, Clause 8. 8-8.1. Here's the oath. There's a special oath of office for the President of the United States. Keep in mind, again, the framers understood what I just told you about English common law. Before he enter on the execution of his office, he shall take the following oath or affirmation. This is your Constitution. I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will faithfully execute the office of the President of the United States and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. And typically, it's so help me God. He cannot become president until he recites that oath. That's what the entire inauguration is about. It's not about all the fanfare and everything. It is so the whole world can see a president who puts his hand on the Bible, the other hand in the air, and swears his oath, an oath that is compelled by the Constitution or he cannot become president of the United States. That's how serious that oath is. Now, one of the things you just heard is he's to uphold the law of the land, the Constitution of the United States, to preserve it. So serious was this to the framers of your Constitution, they put another section in the Constitution under Article 2, Section 3, Clause 3.1. Quote, he, meaning the President, shall from time to time give to the Congress information of the State of the Union, you've seen State of the Union addresses, and recommend to their consideration such measures as he shall judge necessary and expedient. Okay? He may, on extraordinary occasions, convene both houses, or either of them, and in case of disagreement between them with respect to the time of adjournment, he may adjourn them to such time as he shall think proper. Okay? Ready? He shall receive ambassadors and other public ministers, and he shall take care that the laws be faithfully executed and shall commission all the officers of the United States. That phrase is called the take care phrase, the take care clause. He shall take care that the laws be faithfully executed. Now, why is this important? The House of Representatives, every Republican voting for, every Democrat who voted voting against, voted for an impeachment inquiry. What's an impeachment inquiry? It's obviously an impeachment as to whether or not the President of the United States has upheld his oath of office. And the focus, at least on TV and elsewhere for the most part, has been on Joe Biden and his family's financial dealings with enemies of the United States, including the Communist Chinese, including the Russians in Moscow, including the prior Ukrainian government, which was a puppet of Vladimir Putin's and Burisma and all the rest of it. The front corporations, the money laundering, the failure to pay taxes, Mr. 10 percent, Mr. Big, the laptop, got it. 
I want to ask you a question. Do most of your neighbors or family members follow that as closely as many or most of you do? If you were to go into a 7-Eleven today and say, hey, pal, yes, yes, how may I help you? You know, they have these front organizations, the Bidens and these companies, and he's not paying his taxes. Why don't you leave me alone? I'm here to buy, you know, some M&Ms. Okay, but that doesn't mean Congress shouldn't uphold the law, right? So what is Mark trying to say? Ladies and gentlemen, you want a successful impeachment? Then prioritize it properly. And when it comes to Joe Biden, he's violated the United States Constitution at least three ways. Article one, immigration. Joe Biden has purposefully, intentionally violated dozens of federal immigration laws, federal statutes passed duly by Congress and signed by prior presidents. He has undermined them by his actions, by his directives, by his executive orders. He's undermined them through his cabinet, the Department of DHS. He's undermined them by not enforcing the laws and, in fact, insisting that they not be enforced. The mayhem that has been created in this country is unimaginable. The number of Americans dying from fentanyl and other killer drugs coming across the border, this is a direct attack on our citizens. The number of women being raped, the number of kids, little kids, being sold into sex slavery. What's going on on that border is inhumane, which is exactly why Joe Biden wouldn't actually visit the border. He visited a border town, and they turned it into a Potemkin village the way they did San Francisco when Communist Party genocidal maniac Xi visited San Francisco. They cleaned it up for a week, you know. The President of the United States, his obligation is to take care that the laws are enforced, whether he likes them or not. The Supreme Court has even said so on multiple occasions. Why? Because if a president can do what Joe Biden is doing, then why have a Congress? The laws are meaningless. Our immigration laws have been around a long time. They're very effective when they're enforced. We literally have millions and millions of people coming into this country, and we don't know who they are. They're not being vetted. We have people coming into this country who shouldn't be here and not being deported. We have a Border Patrol that's busy changing diapers, a Border Patrol that's busy cutting the razor wire that the state police in Texas are putting in place. In other words, None of the things a president is supposed to do to ensure that our immigration laws are being upheld are being done. That and all the bloody disaster as a result of it is a clear impeachable offense. Now, what's important about this? I don't need to know about bank accounts, wire transfers. I don't need to issue a subpoena. I don't need to know any of that or do any of that. It's uncomplicated. Joe Biden is, by action and word, as is his secretary of DHS, violating intentionally the Constitution of the United States, undermining the power of Congress, destroying the ability to enforce protection of the border, which he's compelled to do under federal statute. That's number one, Article 1. Article 2. The power of the purse belongs to Congress, and more specifically, the House of Representatives. How do we know, how do we know that? Because it says so. Congress, more specifically the House, they determine on raising taxes, raising the debt limit, borrowing, all of it. The president doesn't have that power. Can you imagine if he did? Again, we wouldn't need a House or a Congress. So when Joe Biden decided, you know what, I'm going to forgive a half a trillion or a trillion dollars in student loans because they're my voters, or whatever cockamamie reason, he doesn't have the power of the purse to do that. He can't, on his own, issue a fiat or a directive that the Treasury won't collect a half a trillion dollars or a trillion dollars. Matters taken to the U.S. Supreme Court. The Supreme Court says, Joe. You don't have that power. Don't do it. Joe says, 
What an extremist right-wing out of control Supreme Court trying to tell me what to do, trying to uphold separation of powers and the power under Article I, the power of the purse. I want to seize the power of the purse. I want to make these decisions. So Joe has actively gone around the Constitution, the Congress, has defied the purpose and directive of the U.S. Supreme Court and has now given away 400 to 500 billion dollars of taxpayer dollars in violation of the Constitution. That's Article 2 of impeachment. Article 3, what is the primary responsibility of the president? We have one commander in chief. He's the commander in chief. Now, what if we have a commander in chief that takes steps that actually empowers our sworn enemy, that takes steps to issue waivers that allows tens of billions of dollars to flow into the coffers of, say, the Iranian regime, a terrorist regime which has murdered American citizens, a terrorist regime which has taken American citizens hostage, a terrorist regime that seeks to get nuclear weapons to point them at us, that calls us the big Satan, that makes it clear that they want to topple the United States. We have a president of the United States who not only gives aid and comfort to the enemy, he literally gives billions of dollars to them by his actions and his inactions. They take that money in turn, they fund Hamas, they fund Hezbollah, they fund the Houthis. This is a regime that sought to assassinate a former Secretary of State, a former National Security uh, Advisor. This is a, a regime that seeks to destroy America. Today, they're trying to kill American soldiers that Joe Biden has put overseas. They're attacking American bases overseas. You're funding our enemy? That's an impeachable offense. That should be Article 3, that Joe Biden is literally funding a terrorist regime that has killed American soldiers, hijacked American citizens, uh, has done all kinds of things and has its intention of building nuclear weapons to threaten us, among others. That is Article 3. Article 4 can certainly be that you have a spoiled punk son of a vice president, son of a former senator, Joe Biden, who uses his father and his father's name and his father's office to bring over $30 million into his coffers and the coffers of his family. And nobody believes except the corrupt media and the corrupt Democrat Party that circle the Praetorian Guard, circling the wagons around their, their man. Nobody believes Joe Biden didn't know anything about it. What's he, deaf, dumb, and blind? What's he, Helen Keller? No. He knows, because when it comes to money, Joe knows. Joe likes money. And so, his attorney general will not appoint a special counsel to investigate him, even though the standard for appointing a special counsel has been met a hundred times. Even though the media and the Democrat Party, where's your proof? Where's your proof? Folks, we could show them a dead body. And they would say, where's the proof that it's dead if it helps the Democrats? So they don't matter either. The Republicans have control. But it's a very complicated case. The average American, even the unaverage American, would have some difficulty following all the steps. That doesn't mean you don't take them, but it means that's Article 4. Article 1, Mr. and Mrs. America understand what the hell is going on on that border and don't understand why it's being, not being secured. Article 2, Mr. and Mrs. America understand when a president of the United States opens up the Treasury without authority and gives half a trillion dollars to people who don't deserve it, in violation of the law and the Constitution. Number three, the American people understand when a commander in chief is busy pouring money into the en en enemy and rearming them, whether directly or indirectly, and taking no steps to defend American soldiers, and no steps to prevent them from getting a nuclear weapon, having appointed a special pleader for Iran as our chief envoy and negotiator. Those are three killer, substantive, reasons that Joe Biden should be impeached in addition to the other. 
that is exactly why the impeachment clause is in there, and that is exactly what a high crime is, and that's exactly what's meant by a high crime. So I want to again encourage the Republicans in the House, from the Speaker down, from the three chairmen of the three major committees, can you please get this right and prioritize this properly? You've got a ton on Joe Biden. He should not be president. Whether the Senate acts properly or not, and mostly it won't, you should. Article 1, Article 2, Article 3, Article 4. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.